Nature's Patchwork Quilt Understanding Habitats by Mary Michet. Look into nature and you will see a patchwork of beauty and mystery. A patchwork quilt has many pieces that fit together to make a beautiful blanket. Nature is like a patchwork quilt. It has many different habitats all pieced together to create our wonderful planet. In a habitat, such as a forest, animals and plants live together. They are food for each other and help the forest grow and develop. Each plant or animal depends on others, like a quilt stitched together. We call this interdependence. A desert is another habitat with plants and animals that can live in a hot and dry climate. In a quilt, each piece has its own unique place in the design. In a, in a habitat, each animal and plant has a special role called its niche. A prairie is a grassland habitat. Some prairies have prairie dogs that eat roots and plants. Snakes eat the prairie dogs. Hawks eat the snakes. This is called a food chain. The prairie plants are the first link. Prairie dogs are second, snakes are third, and hawks at the top of the food chain are the fourth link. The ocean, which has 97% of all the water on Earth, has many different habitats. Ocean water near the surface contains very tiny plants called phytoplankton. Tiny animals called zooplankton eat phytoplankton. Tiny shrimp called krill eat zooplankton. Little fish called sardines eat krill. Salmon eat sardines. Sharks or seals eat salmon. This is one marine food chain. The seashore at the edge of the ocean also has many habitats. Different plants and animals live in the shallow water, on the rocks and in the sand. Over generations, plants and animals often change in ways that help them survive. For instance, the feet of swimming birds change to have webbing, which help them swim better than their ancestors did. Some fish can change colours to help them hide or camouflage themselves. Such changes are called adaptations. Lakes and ponds have many tiny plants and animals living in them. They are very small, but you can see them with a magnifying glass or a special tool called a microscope. These microscopic plants and animals are food for each other. The way that these plants and animals eat and are eaten is so complicated that we call it a food web. Arctic and high mountain habitats are very cold much of the year. It's a tough place to live. To survive harsh climates, plants either stay alive all winter under snow or make seeds that can survive the cold. Animals store up food to survive in burrows or hibernating caves. Birds fly to warmer places. Ways of adjusting to the climate are called survival mechanisms. Rainforest habitats are very wet. Cool rainforests are temperate, such as in North America and New Zealand. Hot rainforests are tropical, such as in South America, Africa and Southern Asia. Many rainforest trees are large. Many are cut down. This is called deforestation. Fewer places are left for plants and animals that can only survive in a rainforest. Rainforests have lots and lots and lots of different kinds of trees, shrubs, mosses, lichen, fungi, insects, reptiles, amphibians, birds and mammals. Many different species together make up biodiversity. Houses, towns and cities are habitats for people. People built them over what once was a prairie, desert, forest or rainforest. People have changed some plants and animals by working with them over generations. Dogs, cats and farm animals, as well as many plants that produce food, are very different from their wild ancestors. 
when plants and animals are changed by people, we call it domestication. Ranches and farms are also habitats made by people on what was once prairie, forest or desert. Often domesticated animals like cows, horses and chickens live there. Domesticated plants like tomatoes, corn and wheat also grow there. More and more natural habitats are being taken over by human habitats. When a natural habitat is gone and plants or animals don't have any place left to live, they die. When the last plant or animal of a species dies, the species is extinct. Because plants and animals can't speak for themselves, many environmentalists have worked hard to save them by preserving their habitats. They clean up rivers, plant trees, help animals, study science, paint pictures, sing songs, write books, give speeches, make movies, persuade policymakers, give money, organize friends, and much more. When you are in nature, look around at its beauty. Consider how all the plants and animals live together in an interdependent web of life. This patchwork quilt of nature covers the whole earth, your home. It is yours to learn about, to enjoy, to care for, and to love.